It's official now, isn't he? He waves goodbye to Madrid and joins Manchester United. I wanted to get your view from a Real Madrid perspective. Obviously, they've lost now their two first-choice centre-backs this summer. And that could be a bit of a problem, couldn't it? It could be a problem, which is one of the reasons why I've been so struck by how little noise there is around this. You know, there hasn't been a, a terrible sense of loss. There hasn't been really a kind of a, a tearful farewell. There hasn't been a kind of a sense of, of seeing off a legend. There, there's been no huge, furious criticism about his departure. Now, I think obviously some of that is circumstantial. And some of that is about the, the awareness that the financial situation around Madrid isn't very good. The awareness that Varane wasn't going to renew. And so in that context, getting a, a deal of close to 50 million euros is pretty good. Of course, the arrival of Alaba helps as well. The fact that Militao played well at the back end of last season helps. Um, and and I, I think all of that helps to mitigate, if you like, a little bit of the noise. But I, I'm, st I'm, I'm still struck by it. I'm, I'm still struck by the fact that n there hasn't been more made of this. Because as you say, this is Real Madrid's first choice centre-back partnership going back almost a decade. Now, not quite, of course, because Pepe was there for the start of Varane's period at the club. But basically, for the last seven years, this has been Real Madrid's back too. And, and, and they've both gone. But of course, I suppose from Real Madrid's perspective, as you mentioned, they're trying to cash in while they still can for someone like Varane. So we'll go to a Alaba and Militao centre-back partnership. Unfortunately, Alaba's got covid yeah, although I suppose in truth that doesn't matter hugely, does it? And it, it's a little bit of a setback for his start, but this is something that will be a problem for, for 10 days or so, and then maybe a little bit of recovery times in terms of, of getting fully fit. But it's not enormously problematic for the season ahead. Uh, boys, you take a look at that starting 11. Well, it's the mid, it's not just, I mean, it's it, it's the midfield that gets concerning as well. Not not because of quality, but because of it's old mileage yeah. on legs. Uh, and how long can that keep going? We know. Karim Benzema will probably continue in the manner in which he's been playing, which has been really well. But then you look at the Eden Hazard situation as well, and just what's the desire for him to to try and somewhat replicate that form that made Real Madrid go out and spend that money for him? Because it seems to me from the outside, with fitness and, and other things going on, that there's a huge question mark whether he even wants to get back yep. to being the guy that everybody looks to and says, wow, he can carry the can here. I, I don't think we're going to see that Eden Hazard again. How highly do you rate Alaba, Stevie? And how big a task does he have on his hands now to come into this Real Madrid back four? I don't think he's as good as Varane. R really? No. And so if you're getting rid of a player and bringing in a player who isn't as good, and it's only my opinion, mm. <clears throat> then that's not a great thing, is it? Sure. So, you look at that team as well. I mean, there's a report today that Hazard has gone back to training and is overweight again. Right. I mean, so when you, when you start looking at the team, yes, you're talking about the middle of the park needing regenerated. <clears throat> What's going on up front? Vinicius Junior isn't ready yet. Right. Unless Bale somehow magically, a, the real Bale appears. Right. Then you've got Hazard coming in again overweight. <clears throat> can't stay fit. Can't perform. So you're kind of left with Benzema up front. So... Your two centre-backs are gone. Your midfield three needs regenerating. And you're pretty much relying on one guy up front because you don't know what else you're getting from the other two. That's not a good place to start the season. If he's come back, and I, I haven't seen this, but if, if he has come back out of shape again, he needs a humongous kick up the backside. Right. I mean, seriously. That is just totally unprofessional now. Uh, if that's at least the second time it's happened, if that's the case. Uh, the David Alaba situation, David Alaba is effectively a fullback who has transformed himself into a player who can play centre-back and play in the middle of the pack. Rafael Varane is a straight-up natural centre-back. Man United have got an absolute cracking deal here for that money. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know, when you see the price of some people floating around, to get at somebody with his credentials for £40 million or thereabouts, fantastic business. But as you say, it doesn't leave... Real Madrid squad in really good shape but that's not for Man United to worry about and you know how's he going to handle the Premier League don't make me laugh <laughs> we've seen some of the we've seen some of the strikers out with the top teams in the Premier League he'll, he'll have them in his pocket uh, we'll talk about that a little later on with Jan and, and Manchester United's potential under, with Varane there but just going back to the point that Stevie made in this article that apparently he read so where did you read it Steve? I was listening to uh <laughs> a football show on the radio this morning. Right. Um, and That's the somebody, one I told you not to listen to. Somebody who generally um, is very reliable said he had turned up 
<laughs> it turned up As, overweight again. And this is the stigma, of course, that, uh, like it or not, Eden Hazard has stuck with him now. He said he has that reputation. Yeah, and I suppose go back to that um, starting eleven again, and, and of course, if you're very optimistic, you look at that starting eleven and think that's not a bad team. But but as 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 both Stevie and Craig are saying, you've got to look at the context of it. Now, it's not a bad team if all of those players are fully fit and at their best form. But you've got the doubt about the midfield certainly over the course of a whole season, and, and I'm I'm assuming that Fede Valverde will play a reasonably big role in there if he stays. Martin Erdegaard will have to play a role. You've got two theoretically pretty good central defenders, but they've still got to form a partnership which, of course, is what's been broken up after seven years. And then, yes, let's come to Hazard or Bale or, or Rodrigo or Vinicius or Marco Asensio. There's lots of good attacking players there, but there has to be a question mark about whether or not we get that best form from them. Um, you've got someone like Benzema, who's got no real replacement. And then if you look at it purely in terms of, of Hazard, then, yeah, you have to get a lot more from him than you've got the last two seasons. If he's not fully fit, he's obviously two years older. It's been a, a, a real disaster, his time at Real Madrid so far. Now, up to a point in the first season, it didn't matter because they won the league anyway. They had other players play well in his positions. But I think last year, that really showed. And, and I think Ancelotti has a big, big task trying to get him fit. Because if you do get him fit, we all know he's talented. Mm. It's just about making the whole thing work and, and making him work to, to, to get into shape to start with. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.